assalamu alaikum everyone uh, welcome to this uh, tutorial video on google earth engine and in this video we will be having an introduction to uh, what this platform is uh, and how we can access uh, any satellite data or any other raster data uh, within this platform and then perform processing on it so uh, we will start off uh, with an introduction to the user interface of this platform first of all uh, here is the code editor at the center and here is uh, where we will be uh, writing our code editing it and then running it then after that uh, on the right hand side you can see is the uh, console tab and this is where the outputs of the code which we will be executing uh, are displayed it also has the tasks as well as the inspector tab uh, along with them and we will get into them in more detail uh, later on and at the bottom here you can see the map and this is where uh, the outputs of the codes or scripts which uh, we will be running uh, those outputs and those results uh, are visualized on this map and uh, you can zoom to uh, whichever level you want you can switch between the satellite or the map view and then lastly on the top left side you can see the scripts tab uh, you can see uh, the current project named ndvi as well as uh, the current file named test1 and uh, here you can also find some of the example scripts uh, uh, which uh, include the image classification, image collection uh, you can try running these example scripts as well the docs tab over here uh, contains all the documentations of all functions that are built in uh, in the Google Earth engine platform and then finally the assets tab uh, on the far right side contains all of the assets that are uh, currently present in this uh, project you can see that this folder is uh, empty right now but if we import any of the roster or vector files or we generate any roster or vector files within uh, this platform then those assets will be displayed in this tab and at the top you can see uh, there is a search bar uh, which is basically used to uh, such places or data sets so let us uh, type here sentinel and you can see that it immediately gives us a list of all places named sentinel all over the world uh, you can select any of these places to move your map over that region and then if we just close it and open it once again here you can see all of the uh, raster files or basically the data sets associated with this tag and what we will be interested in is the sentinel 2 level 1c uh, data set uh, let me just open it here here is the description of this data set uh, you can take a look at all of the bands that will be available within this as well as the image properties which may contain uh, metadata or the cloudy pixel percentage and so on so what we can do is we will uh, import this data set within our script and just rename it to sentinel okay so uh, what this does is this uh, loads all of the uh, sentinel dataset imagery in this variable but we are not interested in all of the images it might contain thousands or hundreds of thousands of images but we are interested in is, is um, visualizing those images within a specific region within uh, the region of our interest where we will be processing the data further so in order to do that uh, we will have to first create a polygon so we will click over here we will select the geometry and then draw the polygon over the map here is our polygon 
and you can see that it immediately pops up in the uh, code as well and we can rename it to region maybe right so now what we want to do is we want to filter the sentinel imagery such that it only contains images over this region that we have drawn and in order to do that we can just type in sentinel dot filter uh, data or filter bounds and then pass in the region uh, which we uh, created and then we can apply uh, multiple filters uh, in a cascading manner over it so for example if we want to let's say only see those images which have a cloudy uh, pixel percentage of less than one percent uh, we can filter it on the basis of uh, metadata the filter metadata and then pass it the argument over which we want to filter so we will open the image properties and as you can see over here the name of this uh, property is cloudy underscore pixel underscore percentage we'll copy it from here and pass it to this function and then uh, we will tell it to use the less than parameter and then pass the value of one so it will just uh, filter only those images uh, which have a less than one percentage of cloudy pixels in the entire image and then we can uh, also filter the data on the basis of the dates of those images the dates on which those images were captured and we can do that uh, by uh, cascading another filter on top of it the filter date and uh, we need to pass it the start date and the end date so let's just have the data of year 2022 from 1st January till the 31st of uh, December right so now even uh, with all of these filters applied the uh, output in the filtered data variable will still be an image collection it might contain 10 or 20 or 30 or even hundreds of images uh, so instead of displaying all of those images uh, on top of each other we will create uh, another variable uh, with the name of median image let's say and then uh, we'll just uh, take the median of all of the images present in the filtered data variable so filter data dot uh, median and it will calculate the median of all of the images and then we can output the uh, median image over the map by adding its layer median image right so now we can uh, try running it and see uh, if there are any errors or not okay it gives us an error which says uh, layer error date range bad date time okay so it seems that we have uh, put in the date in a wrong format we can adjust it and then try running it once again and now it is calculating uh, the median and yes uh, the median image is now being displayed uh, but you can see that the output is still uh, not as visually appealing as we hoped it to be it is quite dark so in order to adjust that we uh, will have to tweak the parameters of the layer of this layer we will open this settings icon and here you can see the uh, three different bands which is uh, the layer is displaying right now and we have to adjust them so that these bands are displaying the red green and blue bands of our original data and we can access them by clicking over the sentinel link you can see that the red corresponds to band 4 the green is in band 3 blue is in band 2 okay so we have to adjust them to band 4 band 3 and band 2 and then we can apply a stretch of 3 sigma let's try applying this okay it is still uh, quite dark we uh, may want to adjust the stretch uh, even further or might tweak it back a little bit
let's try a stretch of one sigma instead okay now the images are very light so let's try a stretch of two sigma okay perfect so this is what we want we can apply it and then we can also import these parameters within our code uh, and rename it to uh, params let's say and we can then pass these parameters to the uh, to the line where we are adding this layer onto the map and what this does is uh, it saves those parameters and then uh, passes uh, these parameters every time this layer is being added so that we do not have to uh, do the tweaking which we have just done in the layers setting and we can also name it the layer 1 right so uh, this concludes the introductory video in which uh, we learned about the user interface of the google earth engine uh, and uh, we also covered how to import the sentinel data over a specified region how to apply filters on it on the basis of polygons on the basis of its metadata or on the basis of the dates uh, of uh, those images and as you can see the uh, sentinel imagery is being displayed quite nicely over here uh, in this region of Rawalpindi and Islamabad.